Rachel. Hello. What's your name? I'm Alex, and I'm going to be talking about uh, that guy. Um, so these are the Blab Droids. These are robots that are uh, filming and directing the first documentary made entirely by them, who are robots. Um, so I'm going to go a bit over where uh, the line of reasoning for these guys came along. So about three, four years ago, I was at the Media Lab studying human-robot symbiosis. Um, and that's where you try to get uh, obviously a person and a robot to work together in a, uh, a useful fashion. For example, it's hard to get robots upstairs because you need fancy feet and wheels and stuff. But if you were to ask for help, maybe it'd be a little easier. I need help. If you can help me, press the green button on the side of my head. So this robot roamed around asking people for help, but the, but the real interesting thing was not that people helped it, was that uh, it was built to be cute. Aww. Um, <laughs> this was done uh, somewhat mathematically to have the ratios and size of, <laughs> of, this, other, of this other thing. Um, you know, a big head, small body, uh, makes you think of a baby and having sort of wide eyes, and obviously the voice helps. Um, but the interesting thing was that people were uh, laying down with the robot and telling the robot their problems. This is a runner from the Boston Marathon who I've blacked out for reasons. Um, <laughs> uh, he, was, he was on the floor telling this robot he just met in this weird lab uh, that he was um, grounded because uh, of his flight was, was canceled. So I thought this was pretty interesting. Uh, what did this really mean? People did other fun stuff with it as well. <laughs> I don't know who John is. Um, but, <laughs> but my question is, you know, why did this work so well? You know, why did people want to open up to this robot they found and do fun things with it? Um, well, it turns out these sort of things aren't, aren't that new. Um, so there's this... Okay. Uh, <laughs> the Elijah effect where uh, a computer would act like a psychologist, and they found that the people that uh, actually programmed the thing were, were, were crying in front of it and had emotional connections with it, which is kind of strange since it's just text. Um, so my interest, uh, moving this forward, is like art was using art as an experiment. So making these things that seemingly don't have much emotion to them um, and testing to see if you know, people will have a connection to it. Um, so here's a music box that plays You Are My Sunshine, powered by the sunshine. <laughs> Pretty simple, but people had very sm uh, strong emotional connections to it, especially when the sun went down and it started winding down and getting sort of tired. Wah. Uh, and another one was uh, uh, draining the ocean with a solar-powered water pump. Um, <laughs> And obviously, obviously very silly, but people, people, people put a lot into this, like, oh, God, this is my life. <laughs> so, so where, do we go, where do we go from there? Like, well, what, can you make a machine that dies? Can you make someone feel like empathy for a machine that's dying? So we made this drum that's counting down to its own death. So obviously here people had very strong emotional reactions depending on their particular personal take on death and mortality. Um, but obviously all these are very simple machines, but you can see that they created very strong emotional connection. Oh, all right, so back to robots. So <laughs> that's Boxy, and this is Blab Droids. So Boxy was a robot from, from MIT. Um, I've been working with uh, filmmaker Brent Hoff on this new, uh, new venture here, and you'll see a few clips of people talking to the robot. If you could give someone any gift, what would it be? Give my mother the gift of not worrying about me before she dies. And she wants me to lose like a ton of weight and um, get really, really healthy. And she needs to see that before she dies for her to feel like I'm going to be okay when she's not here. And I wish I could give her that. And I'm not positive I can. You asked. If you died tomorrow, what would you regret the most? I switched out her shampoo for a nair hair remover when she wasn't looking and clumps of her hair fell out. I felt that she deserved it and it's very much so justified and I would do it again to her in a heartbeat. I still don't like her. 
So that was just someone with a robot in front of their face, no other person there. Uh, and that's it. Thank you. <laughs>